Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking Onrush was a racing game, what with it having a load of vehicles in it and all, but really, it's kind of not. I went along to a preview event to get a hands-on with the game and discovered that rather than being a standard action racer like Motorstorm, it's actually something completely different. Don't get me wrong, there's still a bit of racing in there, but that's only a tiny portion of what makes Onrush Onrush. So without further ado, because I imagine you're all a bit like, what the hell are you on about, Ian? Here are seven ways in which Onrush isn't actually a racing game after all. Let's start with the stampede system, which is an integral part of the Onrush experience. You know that bit in The Lion King where the wildebeests charge down through the gorge and end up squishing Mufasa to death in the process? Well, thanks to the stampede system, Onrush plays out a little bit like that. Except with fewer lion fatalities, I hope. I mean, I don't think my heart can take another moment like this, to be honest. Anyway, as you're thundering your way through Onrush's crazy tracks, you'll notice that at all times you're surrounded by a load of neutral AI-controlled vehicles. These brittle racers are called fodder, and they're the vehicle equivalent of Titanfall's grunts, making races more action-packed and giving you easier targets to perform takedowns on. Smash one of these mobile chunks of metal off the track and you'll earn an extra bit of boost that can be used by wise racers to take down even more vehicles. Keep this chain of destruction going and you'll have an almost unlimited supply of boost at your disposal. Plus, you'll feel a little bit like one of Mad Max's warboys without the need to spray paint your teeth silver. It's a pretty simple but very effective way of making each race feel rather thrilling, and it means you're always within reach of some awesome action, even if you regularly find yourself on the receiving end of a takedown. And that leads me straight on to my second point. There are absolutely no start or finish lines in Onrush at all. Like, not even little ones. So you really don't need to worry about crashing at all. Confirmed impact. Well, obviously you do a bit, but not in the traditional sense. You see, in probably the most radical difference to any other racing game out there, there's no first second or even third positions in Onrush. In fact, there are no positions at all. As soon as a game starts, you're all just thrown into the stampede, and with no positions to jostle for, your primary concern will be getting stuck into the mix and earning points for your team. That also means if you crash into an immovable object or get taken down by another racer, instead of having to respawn at the back of the pack and go through that dull push to rejoin the rest of the group, here you'll be catapulted right back into the middle of the stampede where the chaos can start afresh. It's an idea that makes Onrush feel radically different to any other racing game I've ever played, but it also makes it feel a lot more exciting, because you're always in with a chance of doing something awesome. So if you're sat there thinking to yourself, but how the hell does Onrush work if there's no finish line? Well you're not alone. It took me a little while to get used to not having a finish line to aim for as well, but that's where this next point comes into play. The thing is, Onrush is all about teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, and it also makes the events in Onrush play out completely differently to any other racing game I've ever played. Here's how it works. Instead of having to complete a certain number of laps to win a game, here, your primary concern will be earning points for your team. You earn points in a variety of different ways, depending on what game type it is you're playing. And it's this battle for points that gives Onrush a completely unique structure to its races. 
Instead of battling to cover ground here, you're racing to fill up those point bars at the top of your screen. The more points you earn, the better your team does, and the faster your score bar fills up. When one team does achieve the target score, that doesn't automatically mean the race is over, though. In most racing games, whether you earn a victory or suffer a loss, the action will normally pause the moment you cross the finish line, and then you have to wait for a new race to start. In Onrush, however, the action keeps going, win, lose or draw. At the end of each round, you'll just keep racing around the same track, next to the same opponents, and while there's a second or two break in the point scoring to allow each team to regain their composure, it's not long before the next round kicks off and you're back to earning points for your team. and rush to score. Alright then, let's talk about Onrush's game modes, because while they are unique to the racing genre, they have taken a lot of inspiration from other genres like first-person shooters and MOBAs. There are four event types in Onrush, Overdrive, Switch, Countdown and Lockdown. Overdrive is the purest event available and it's everything that makes Onrush special, distilled into one game mode. To win here, you need to earn boost and then rack up points for your team by burning through that boost as quickly as possible. To earn boost, you need to drive as aggressively as you can because you'll earn huge amounts of it by taking down opponents. You'll also earn boost by taking down fodder, pulling off sweet jumps and taking risks with the environment, so there's always incentive to make your ride as action-packed as possible. Switch is like the fastest, most destructive game of cat and mouse you've ever played. The next game mode, Switch, is like the driving equivalent of Call of Duty's gun game. Everyone starts on a bike and each time you get wrecked, you lose a life. If that happens, you change to a newer, stronger vehicle and so on and so on. Make mistakes early on and you can either try to use your new, beefier vehicles to protect your teammates on bikes or you could turn yourself into a hunter and try to track down and wreck the other team's smaller vehicles. When your team's out of them, then it's game over. Drive through gates to earn time for your team. Then there's Countdown, a game mode that replaces the point system with a timer. As each race progresses, those timers tick down towards zero, so each team member must pass through as many gates as possible in order to top them back up. When one team runs out of time completely, the other team is awarded a point, so don't forget to use every dirty trick you have at your disposal to make sure your opponents miss their targets. Control, that's what lockdown is all about. The final game mode is called Lockdown, and this is essentially King of the Hill or Control, but played at 100 miles an hour. If a zone appears, you need to get inside it as quickly as possible, and then stay inside it in order to earn points for your team. The team with the most races in the zone earns the most points, so make sure you do whatever it takes to keep any enemy vehicles outside of that circle. Easier said than done. I've talked quite a bit about takedowns already, but I've not really mentioned how you achieve them. That's because the way they're done in Onrush almost makes it feel more like a beat-em-up rather than a racing game. Obviously, you can just ram people into walls or squash them from above to perform standard takedowns, but there are also special moves you can pull off that give you an even better chance of wrecking enemy racers. Amazing. There are eight car classes in Onrush, from small bikes to big, chunky 4x4s, and each one has its own unique loadout. Vortex. At the start of each event, you choose one of these vehicles, but every time you're on the receiving end of a takedown, you then have the option to quickly swap classes, a bit like you can in first-person shooters. Continue. The longer you stick with one class, though, the more boost you'll earn, and the more of that boost you spend, the more you'll build up your rush meter. 
Once you've filled your rush meter, you can then trigger rush mode, which is the onrush equivalent of activating an ultra combo in a fighting game. Each vehicle's rush has a slightly different effect, from blinding enemies or leaving a trail of fire behind you to giving you much more ramming power so you can slam through anyone unlucky enough to be in your way. Plus, when you activate rush mode, the soundtrack goes crazy, which is always really satisfying to hear. Look, it had to happen at some point, didn't it? But here we are, On Rush is a racing game with loot crates. But don't worry, you won't need to pay for them with real world money. At least, not for the foreseeable future anyway. On Rush's loot crates are earned by completing challenges and levelling up, and each one contains a selection of cosmetic items. Yep, that's right, there's nothing in there that will give your opponents the edge on the track, although there's plenty in there that will give them the edge on the catwalk. Please bear in mind that these menus I'm showing now are work in progress, so they're a little bit scruffy. But as you can see, you'll earn different outfits, celebrations, tricks, vehicle skins, and tombstones, which are these little virtual gravestones that appear on the track once you get taken down. There's a huge amount of customization here, so if you play enough of the game, you should be able to give each of the 12 player characters their own unique look on the tracks. Finally, and yes, I know this appears in a couple of other racing games too, but there's also a photo mode in Onrush. The difference here is that you'll be using this one to take photos of sweet jumps and extreme carnage rather than just super sleek sports cars looking sexy on a racetrack. You can take a photo whenever you want in single player by just pausing the game and opening up the photo mode. Once that's active, you can change the position of the camera, adjust the depth of field, and fiddle about with a bunch of other settings that only make sense to people who've done a degree in making photos look goodology. Best of all though, there's a bunch of funky filters to add, so whether you understand focal lengths or not, you should be able to take some pretty awesome snapshots. Then, once you're done making lovely pictures for your bedroom wall, just unpause the game and you'll be catapulted straight back into the action. Talk about a photo finish, although there's no finish lines in this game, so that joke doesn't actually work. Nice one, Ian. You bellend. And there we go, those were seven ways in which On Rush isn't actually a racing game after all. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please do give it a like, do subscribe if you haven't done already, and do have a very lovely day. Goodbye.